I'm here in my class team signed in as an educator. The first thing I'm going to do is add search coach to my class team. To do this, go up and click plus and you'll see a bunch of apps here. You should see search coach by default. If you don't see it, you can just type search coach in this little box up here and you'll filter down to the app. So I will click on plus. You'll see this nice little dialogue. It explains what search coach is, has a bunch of the benefits. We even have a nice little highlights reel video here if you want to explore and links to lesson plans. But in this case, I will just click save and it adds a search coach tab right here in the general channel. And I'm going to expand this so I have the full real estate of the screen. Now what you're seeing here is the search coach user interface. We've wrapped the Bing APIs behind the scenes and added our own user interface that's more of a teaching and learning environment and a nice little sandbox so you can experiment with your class on different search techniques. You'll see there's an enhanced user interface, things like domains, file type, date range, and operators. And I'm going to show in more detail how those things work. There's also a tip of the day and this rotates. So every day that your students sign in, they're going to see this search tip of the day. This is a nice one about perspective, critique and debate. And when you're using searches and you can get better answers in that case. Another nice enhancement is that Bing safe search behind the scenes is enabled for any queries or results that are put in. In addition, in the upper right, if you're an educator, you'll see this class settings button. I'll click this. You can choose backgrounds as well as filters, and I'll be showing a lot more about filters like fact checking and creating your own custom buttons a little later. But even right now for background, let's choose one here and I will hit apply. Now this is what everyone in the class will see when they come into search coach. It's a little more pleasing. I feel a little bit relaxed when I look at this. Now, before we get into the details of the demo, I want to make sure that educators know we've got a bunch of great resources for professional development, learning and search coach lesson plans. First up, we have a search coach product page that recently launched and the link here is on the screen and in the description. There's a high level summary if you just want to understand what is search coach, why is it important and there are some great links. The other one is that we have a new search coach course in the Microsoft Learn Center. So if I switch here and again, the link is on the screen and also in the description of this video, we have a new educator course that's designed to develop search strategies with search coach and search progress. In addition to this Microsoft Learn course, we also have a set of lesson plans that you can experiment with. And the link is on the screen, link in the description as well. Simple lesson plans, moderate lesson plans, and advanced lesson plans. So this is a great way to explore how to use search coach features with a lesson plan. And we hope to add more lesson plans as well in the future. We also are working with other partners to have lesson plans that are not developed by Microsoft, but top information literacy experts. So watch out for those as well. Okay, let's switch back to search coach and go into the demo. Let's start with a simple query. I'll paste in the old, are dogs better than cats? Let's get go. What happens is search engines are going to give you all the links that say why dogs are better than cats. And many people don't know the way you enter the query can bias it. Well, search coach has this search tip that pops up that says, Hey, you know, when you use language like better than it can result in opinions that sound like facts. An example is sugar. Good for you is going to give you a bunch of reasons why sugar is good for you. It gives tips on how to use operators, for example, to make better queries. The other thing you're going to notice is that there are no ads. We take all the ads out and we keep this a very simplified experience. It really focuses on learning. I'll hit back. Let's look at the first button, the domain filter button. When I click this, you're going to see a lot of different options. We break it into common domains, .com and .org. And just to note, we have labels. So for example, many students are always taught that .org is nonprofit. They're great. But in some cases, there have been hate speech sites that take the .org and try to trick people. So it's always good to consider a site's agenda before using it as a source. We also have ways to filter on US domains like .gov and .edu. Not everyone realizes, especially in the United States, that other countries don't use these same domains at the end. And at the bottom, you've got lots of options for country filtering, and I'll show that in a minute. So what we're going to do here is type in our query at the top, electric cars. And what we want to do is just filter on .gov sites. So if I click here, what it does is it puts a check and then it adds site colon gov. And that allows students to understand and learn if you just want to filter on .gov, for example, really easy to add that site colon filter. And I'll hit go. You'll see that all of the sites here are now .gov sites. So it's filtered just on them. If I wanted to change this to .edu, I click here. And I could just do .edu and uncheck .gov and now it has site colon edu. So this is a teaching UI to help students understand how these things work. And I hit go 
and now I just have .edu sites. Next up, we're going to drill in and show some of this extra annotation next to each site and show how students can learn from that. We'll go back. Next, we'll try a query COVID-19 and I'll hit go. I want to demonstrate some of the details in this search results page. Each search result that we have has a NewsGuard rating, the domain, last crawled, and where it's from if we know that, so United States in this case. The NewsGuard rating lets you drill in and get a nutrition rating on any different site that NewsGuard is rated. They typically will rate news sites and a few other types of sites as you can see here. And what it does is it breaks it down into credibility and transparency. And there's lots of different topics. This can start exposing students how to think about the sites that they're looking through. So I'm going to scroll down here and there's going to be a site. This one here is NewsGuard rated 70. Okay, click this open. And it says, oh, they don't regularly correct their errors. Website does not disclose ownership and financing. Hmm. And a few other X's. What's really cool is I can click full NewsGuard analysis. This pops up a detailed nutrition label for NewsGuard. And they've done a bunch of great research and I can drill in, oh, ownership and financing. Website's founder, Russian born businessman, name so-and-so. And I can keep scrolling down and looking through this information. So we've seen a lot of students in the preview find that this is really fascinating because historically, you don't really understand who's making this news, who's behind this site, why are they doing these things? So that's just one example. If I go back here, you'll also see Wikipedia and this one just has a basic sort of a gray eye. So I click here and Wikipedia is pretty much neutral in the case of how NewsGuard rates it so it doesn't give it a rating. But this concept lets students really drill in and understand how these sites are being created and how they're being rated and why. The last thing we'll show with the domain filtering is by country. So I'm going to paste in a query. We're going to look at Brexit and I'll click the domains button. And down below, you're going to see country and regional domains. I'll expand more and you're going to see lots of different countries. Now I'm just going to choose Australia and Canada as my two countries. I check those boxes and you'll see up top it adds site colon AU or site colon Canada. So again, this is teaching UI so students can understand, oh, I can just see sites from these two countries. And now I'll click go. The search results come up and it has Canada and Australia results only. And I scroll down and I'm only seeing Canadian and Australian sites. Another nice thing to note, it looks like NewsGuard found one that's not rated really high. So if I go into here, Oh, there's a lot of different issues with this site. It says proceed with caution. This website fails to adhere to several basic journalistic standards. So that's pretty interesting. Good learning moment for students. It's like, you want to be careful about this one. If I want to change the countries, I could drop this down and expand again. And maybe I want to add France this time. Add France. It adds France up there. I hit go. And now you'll see some French sites as well as Australia and Canada and the other countries that you've filtered on. Next up, let's explore the file type operator. So let's say I'm going to do some research on Harriet Tubman. Now I just want to find PDFs about Harriet Tubman. So I want to filter it down to just PDFs. If I go on file type, you're going to see some options. So I can click on this and it says we'll just return PDF documents. And it adds this file type colon PDF after Harriet Tubman. This is an underknown thing that is great for that research project. And if I hit go, You'll see all of the results right here are now just filtered to PDF. So I scroll down, I see only PDFs and I'll click here and you'll see that Harriet Tubman PDF document open up. If I want to change that to look for PowerPoints or documents, I just click here and I can uncheck all three at once or just do one of them. It's up to you, but it will filter based on what you click on. And let's go back. Now we'll look at date range. This is one that looks at when was the web most recently scanned on those specific documents or websites that you're looking at. So it's getting towards Super Bowl time. Let's do a Super Bowl keyword phrase. Now I just want to have things in the past 24 hours because the Super Bowl is really soon and I'm just going to hit go and you're going to look at a bunch of Super Bowl articles that are just in the last 24 hours. Super Bowl 57 is coming up, right? If I want to have Super Bowl, I don't want to look at Super Bowl 2 or Super Bowl 12. I'm looking for the most recent articles. So it's great to have that real recent filter. And you can change a couple of these past month, past year, etc. And you can notice how the results will change based on what you search. The last of the default buttons is operators. And this is a core technique in teaching how operators can change the way that search results work. One of my favorites is quotation marks. I'll search for my favorite football team, the Seattle Seahawks, and I'll do quotation marks and it adds quotation marks, which is an exact match. And I'll click go. Now it's just going to pull up sites 
with Seattle Seahawks. It won't pull up Seattle or Seahawks sites. It's just Seattle Seahawks. You can even filter like we should before on domain. So maybe I want to look at Seattle Seahawks sites, but only from the perspective of Canada, our neighbors to the north. It adds a site colon CA and I hit go. Now I'm just looking at Seattle Seahawks results, but from Canada. So it's really easy to start combining these different types of search engine features to get more specific results. We'll go back. Now that we've covered the core buttons and filters, we'll go into some of the more advanced features in class settings that let you show and hide and disable buttons, customize your own buttons, and even make fact check buttons. Let's go up to class settings here. And we already showed the background earlier. In this case, we'll go to filters. The first set of features allows you to enable or disable some of the default buttons. For example, let's say you're an educator and you're just teaching about domains and you don't want the students to go clicking around on all the other buttons during the lesson plan. I can just flip these buttons to an off state and hit apply. Now you'll see these buttons are disabled. So when the student hovers, it says your educator has disabled this filter. So they can't go clicking on them. They can only click on the domain button. So that gives you a few options in class settings to enable and disable different buttons depending on what you're doing. The other one that's been really popular is the ability for educators to create their own set of filters. So let's say I'm an educator and I'm teaching on a few different sites and I want those students to be able to search over those sites. If I click create here, I can give the filter a title. So in this case, this is Mr. Tholfson. This is my special set of buttons and I can add my sites right here. So I click add a site, hold on, archives.gov, that's a great site, we'll add another couple here. So I've added archives, Kids National Geographic, and a Sea Turtles organization site. And I'll click save. Now this Mr. Tholfson button, I can edit it or I can delete it later, I can turn this on and it's gonna show up as a button. The other nice thing is I can create multiple of these custom buttons. What that means is let's say I'm teaching different units and I want to have very specific sites per unit. You can create these sets of buttons right here, these optional filter buttons, and you can turn them on or off as you're going through your units. So I'll hit apply. Now you'll see there's a Mr. Tholfson button. So let's say I drop this down and now you're going to see these are those different sites that I put in and those can be custom filters. So for example, if I want to do a search for a good topic, which is Elvis and Nixon. I think there was a famous moment when those two met and I just want them to search across archives.gov. So they could click this and it adds site colon archives.gov and I hit go. There we go. When Nixon met Elvis and it's from archives.gov. So all of the results are just filtered to archives.gov and that's something that you can help teach in your class. This is a really powerful technique to dive right into a very specific site. And like I said before, this button here, if I have a different unit and different sets of buttons back in the class settings, I can add those. And so I can turn them on and off on a per unit basis. Let's go back here. I'm going to go back into class settings, back into filters. And down here, if I want to turn the Mr. Tholfson button off, I can do that. Another type of button we've added, and this is a great one to really let students know about the concept of fact checking. So how can I do this? I turn this on. And I'm going to go into edit and we give a couple of default fact check sites to explore. These are popular ones, factcheck.org, Snopes. There's a teen fact check network called Pointer that's very popular. You don't have to use these. You can delete them. You can add your own, but by default, we'll leave these on. So I'm going to click back right here and I'm going to enable this fact check button and I'll hit apply. This works in a very similar way. So when I click this fact check button, it has these sites here. Now I can have them search over all three if I wanted. I'm saying use all the fact check buttons. You'll see it adds site colon factcheck.org, Snopes, and Pointer, and they are all ORed together using operators. I'll turn those all off. In this case, we'll do a famous conspiracy theory, or not, about the moon landing being faked. So I'll go up here. Was the moon landing faked? And we're going to look at factcheck.org. And you click that on and it adds site colon factcheck.org. Again, we're teaching students how to use these filters. Let's hit go. So there's a bunch of factcheck.org, you know, lunar conspiracy theories, a bunch of great information in factcheck.org. And again, this site is 100 out of 100 NewsGuard rated, so it's fairly trustworthy. So fact checking is a great way that you can start teaching students about fact check sites how to go and filter and really look up different types of information they might find. Is it true? Is it not true? Is it questionable? We'll hit back. 
That wraps up the demo of Search Coach, but now we're gonna show Class Insights. The educator gets a bunch of really interesting insights on how students were using the tool in the class. So I'm gonna go over here into my class teams. Now in Civics, we're gonna go into Insights over here on the left. Now what you see is over on the right hand side, there are Search Coach Insights. I'm gonna go here to drill in. Now there's a bunch of information on how students were using Search Coach in the class. We have things like the number of searches attempted, they only opened the first result. This is actually pretty common. Sometimes students might only click the top result and you wanna teach them explore more on the search results. Don't always click the first one. How many times were there no search results opened? So you can sort like this really easily backwards and forwards. If I scroll down, you can see what search filters are being used. Domains versus operators or file types or date range. You can see the domain filters by org, by country, all that information. Even file type filters what's being used most common domains that were coming up. So you really get a sense across the class, oh, nasa.gov was the most common domain that was shown in the results, and it was the most common visited. And one of the most fun features is a word cloud about common search terms. So you can see the most common search terms being used across your class. Looks like food was most common, astronaut, and space. So some very powerful insights that you can filter on that are baked in by default. This is information that historically educators just don't have a sense of how their students are searching, how they're querying, what results that they're engaging with or not. You can also filter here on different days and times and months. So really easy to filter out all these different results. So very powerful. Something fun to try out with insights. We had an early preview educator do this in her classroom and had a lot of fun and success. And that was share the actual word clouds and insights with the rest of the class after an exercise. That lets everyone else see what was everyone else looking for and doing. And they were talking about it in the class and comparing and contrasting. So that's an interesting exercise to try with insights. That wraps up what exists today for Search Coach and Insights. Briefly, I wanna show you what we announced recently Search Progress, which is the companion assignment component to Search Coach, is coming in the very near future. And it's really about showing your work and it's integrated into Teams assignments. What's the difference between Search Coach and Search Progress? Just think of Search Progress as a search assignment in Teams and that integrates components of Search Coach. And let's walk through what that looks like. The flow is that the teacher creates the assignment, the student completes it, the teacher reviews it, and then the teacher tracks with insights. It's a very similar flow to reading progress, if you're familiar with that one. And a reminder, these are early screens. They might change, but we're gonna give you a sneak peek. First, the teacher creates the assignment. So here in the same area where you drop down and add a reading progress assignment, in this case, you would attach a search progress assignment. The teacher would set up the assignment, they could choose how many sources they want, the justification, reflection, or even thinking about citations in the future. After the teacher makes the assignment, the student opens it up. So here's the student, here's the search progress assignment, the research is, is Facebook healthy for you? The student could use our tool and do searches, and on the right hand side, there's an area where you can add your sources. And not only does it add the source, it adds the query that the student made. This is really interesting information. For example, if I did Facebook bad for mental health, here's some sites. I might open up this site as a student. It would pop up the browser. I look at this and I think, oh, this is a good site. When I go back in a search coach, we would allow you to save that site as a source. And when I hit the little plus button, the idea would be not only does it add the source, it adds the query right here. So it adds the query as well as the source and then describe why you saved this source really important information when you're doing an assignment. When I'm all done, think of this as a shopping cart, I have all my queries and all my sources, and then I could complete that assignment and turn it in. And the student could give a reflection when they turn in all their queries and sources. It also tracks all the searches that a student did and that gets turned in with the assignment as well. Here's some examples I could describe each of these why I saved this source as a student. And then I would turn this in. And then finally, the teacher reviews the assignment. So as a teacher now, when I open up that student's assignment in the speed grader, you see all the sources and you see the search terms, the filters used and the queries that they made. This is really seeing the thinking behind what that student was doing. And I can see all those details as the educator. Think about in the future where you make an assignment, you say turn in a Word document, and then you also attach search progress to have all this modernized bibliography of querying and searching integrated. 
We also have plans to integrate Search Coach into Microsoft Edge browser that we talked about in our big reimagined event. So watch for that too. All these things are still being developed. So in the coming months, look to see interesting previews coming out and experiments.